The Square Ball Podcast. Propaganda returns for 2024. Welcome to the show. Dan here along with Michael and Moscow. Who's the show brought to you with, Michael? Can you remember? Is it still the same guys? Uh, that, what, Leeds' favourite law firm? That's the ones, yeah, yeah. Levi Solicitors. And don't restrict yourself to, you know, Leeds. Yeah. Offices around the place. But you can also, do you know what, they've got a website. What, well, I mean, you can access that from anywhere? <laughs> yeah. Well, have a look then, I suppose. Uh, do you know the address? Just Google it. That's what, <laughs> I, that's what, that's what I do. Leave, Levi Solicitors.co.uk forward slash the square ball. 10% discount on your legal fees. Um if you go via us or give us a mention when you get in touch with Levi's. What what services do you, do you want to... Wills Probate Conveyancing. Dispute Resolution, Employment Law. All those, yeah. yeah. Personal Injury, all the usual stuff. Yep. Yeah, great. Good stuff. Thank you for that. It's all right, you're welcome. I've, I've refreshed it for the new year, I think. <laughs> by, by being even less competent in the, in the role. I told people to Google something. More adverts should say that. Yeah. If you're interested, just Google just it. Google it. Right. Yeah. Near enough to a call to action, isn't it? Google it if you're interested. Uh, right then, Propaganda is the show where we find out what's being said in the football world. And we have beaten Birmingham. They're probably not very happy because they've, since we recorded the match ball, sacked Wayne Rooney. Boo. They should be delighted. We've done them a favour. The fans must be jumping for joy. Best thing we could have done for them. They missed it, as we said on the match ball, what they turned up full of all the joys of Wayne. And then uh, within an hour, they were screaming for him to go. So we... We've helped. It was, in many ways, the ideal outcome that he would come to Ellen Road, have to run the gauntlet, be roundly abused by our fans mm -hmm. for being roundly old Shaped. and bald, by, mm. bald and, and chubby and stuff. Can you believe he's younger than you? I can't believe he's younger than anyone. He, he, look, he looks more or less like the oldest man in the stadium yesterday. Mm. Yeah, he's, uh, he's not... I mean, he, he looked about 30 when he was 16, though, didn't he? I know when he kind of burst onto the scene with Everton, he was one of the, he took, he took a look at, a bit like that darts play that everyone's on about now. Yeah. That he did take a look and go, no, yeah. come on, come on now. Yeah. Look the, at dif it. the difference, you could see he was 16, though, when he ran. That's and true. And, like, throughout his playing career, he would pretty much be, he'd be, he might look a little more elderly, like the, the sort of the 1920s equivalent of a, of a, a tough paper round. But when he moved, oh, yeah, he's a great footballer and a great athlete. Now, I would not want to see him run. I'd quite like, maybe for charity, him and Steve Evans can have a race. <laughs> anyway, he's having a race to the job centre now, isn't he? To find himself new employment. Or is he going to have a break, as has been recommended by some people? I'm glad we got to beat him, at least, because it felt unfair that we had to play that good, brief bit of Birmingham at the start of the season. I've been watching him lose every week since and going, oh, and, even, fair, and even then they weren't that good. No, they weren't. We, they were, we were just a mess at that point, weren't we? They were just, they were just fine, weren't they? But he's made him a lot, a lot less than fine. Yeah, and, and he, but he's, he's complained about not being able to complete the journey. You can't, you can't complete this journey, this, this underlying issues that need addressing in thirteen weeks. Can you? You need more time for that. The journey to League One. The journey, well, the journey from sixth down to twentieth. Yeah, yeah, he's got, he's done really well. I think the resurgence of Sheffield Wednesday and Birmingham's drop has really made it quite interesting down there because you, you kind of assumed that was one of the the place has taken up and yeah. you assumed Birmingham on the fringes of the playoffs would be nowhere near it but there you go that's He's, football isn't it that's Wayne Rooney's management for you it was quite interesting in his statement that he didn't say anything about the fans he thanks Tom Wagner Tom Brady and Gary Cook who are the owners and the exec and the um, celebrity gridiron player that they've got in to make them all feel good and the opportunity they gave me thanks for them and then he's on about football's results business. I should have had more than 13 weeks. Wah, wah, wah. Could take me some time to get over this setback. Wah, wah, wah. Uh, and then finally, I wish Birmingham City FC and its owners my best wishes mm. in the pursuit of their ambitions. But those fans who were telling me to fuck off at Elland Road, they can all go and um, swivel. The owners are the ones that have sacked him. <laughs> exactly, but he's still very grateful to Tom them. Tom Brady's shat his white jeans and <laughs> in panic of the relegation, hasn't he? But he would still rather say thank you and pay tribute to them and than say anything about the the likes of Jasper Carrot and his uh, fellow Birmingham City fans. Yes. Should we hear from some of those Birmingham City fans then? Is it Jasper Carrot? Yeah, it might as well be. Okay. They've got the same, same voice. So what have you got for us then, Michael? You've been trolling the fan channels in the last 24 hours, less than 24 hours mm. or thereabouts. Quick turnaround. Yeah, Blues Focus, though. We're at Ellen Road. What's this podcast about? Uh, blues. Uh, focusing on the Blues. It's focused on 
the Blues largely. Um, so this is what 1-0 sounds like. I mean, I'm only showing 1-0 so I can have 2-0 to contrast it. Too many times. Didn't get much of that. Boys, you boys, you boys, you boy. Yeah, that's how it sounded. But it was nice. The footage was quite decent, obviously, from where the away fans are, right in front of that cross. Yeah. Captured it well. This is how the uh, the second goal was captured. Was it similar? Not quite. Gone for a piss. See the second goal? No. Uh, oh, you on the I had to run back to Yeah, I did, but I ran back for it. Yeah, just like Dan James, just whacked it in. And then we nearly considered it first. Kicked it straight out. Content creators. I'm in a piss. Right, content creators, number one, buy a microphone. <laughs> Didn't even film myself, I'm in a piss. Imagine my disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> could, have cut, could have cut that in. <laughs> yeah, great, yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, try, try to time your pisses a bit better, that's all I'd say. It was nearly half time, wasn't it, I suppose? So there would have been plenty of times to do it then. Maybe maybe thinking I'll beat the rush. The other thing is to maybe um, really go for that idea because you, you're always looking for a unique selling point. Goals as heard from inside different stadium mm. toilets would be a new thing. I imagine, you know, if you did get a good microphone, maybe play with the sound, do something with the echo, does it and the proportions and, you know, you're dealing with lots of hard surfaces... Lots of different shapes, some triangular roofs, that kind of thing. Which part of the toilet you're, you're in? Because mm. some will be... I know the West Stand toilets, there's a corner, there's a bit of the, the stand kind of slopes down over it, and then but then further away from there, you're near the windows that are out in the corridor. So, um, And you've got a whole... They've got the whole of the championship to go through and then League One next season. <laughs> so it could be uh, something different. Yes. It's just talking about content creators buying microphones and then going for piss. This has reminded me of that scene. Is it in Naked Gun? Yes. When Lieutenant Frank Drebin goes for a piss at City Hall and he's left his microphone on. So um, seek that one out. One for the kids there. Another reference. Cultural, modern. I think it, I think it stands up, does um, yeah. Naked Gun. I, yeah. I still would laugh at it. Good. Rightly or wrongly. Right. Um, nice beaver, etc. So, 2 nil down. Where do we go next? Is it 3-0 down? Yeah, well, this is just a bit of discontentment that is occurring between... This is, I suppose, the bit of the game where you're thinking, if we can get a goal back... Next goal is very important. We might get back yeah, into yeah. this. So the, the, It's a difficult lead 2-0, isn't it? It is, occasionally. It wasn't really on um, Monday night, Monday evening. Monday afternoon. Afternoon. Yeah. When was New it? Year's Day. Strange Christmas, New Year period. So the, there's still a bit of hope here and frustration... Um, and then it just ends with, with our goal. So this is, it covers a long period, this, but you hear some of the upset. Oh, fucking hell. Put it in. Yeah, just take all the fucking pace out of the attack. Brilliant idea. Speed it up. string a pass together. I wouldn't expect him to win, but I was expecting something better than this. He's so fucking bad at crossing, honestly. I don't know why he can't anything. Thank God for that, honestly. What the fuck are we doing? Go backwards, backwards, do it again. How many games do they need to have to lose in order to know that this doesn't work? It's an all game that jump, yeah. What a single header from it. I mean, not denying that Leeds are a good team, just disappointed in us again. Boring and crap, and not worth any bit of the money that we spent to come in. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Feeding on the tears of others. I can kind of see how they've got to that. Yeah, we've been there. We, we, and we were saying it yesterday, weren't we? We came in here after the game, and we were like, what were they trying to do? It was just a really clueless, directionless performance. Possession football. Possession from the back. Exciting. What's the, what's the phrase that you used? You mentioned it in your match report. It's, they, well, they wanted fearless football. That's it, fearless it's, football. Um, is what Kerry Cook and Tom Brady thought they were getting. What and did you describe Wayne Rooney as that really tickled my bones? Uh, I, I said at the end that he was a notorious moron. <laughs> 
um, sort of implying that because you know the big thing about yesterday is like oh uh, Bamford and Rutter is you know one playing at nine one and playing at ten maybe that's the answer for everything and things there's two things it looked good so we've learned that much is that it can work um, but yeah we need to actually play a team that's any good and then also see if it works away and there's part saying it, it wasn't really tested a team coached by a notorious moron it's possibly not um, the biggest test. Yes, I mean, it's a fair description. If you want to, if you want to read that, it's on the website squareball.net. Should we? Can, I, we, can, we, listen, can we listen to this bit? I was just going to say, come back to me in a second. All right. I just want to see if you can hear the moment at which it turns on Rooney. That's all. Yeah. Starting off with Leeds fans, finishing off with the whole ground singing it. It's always nice. Again, we've been there. Yeah. We've been there. You're like, yeah, actually, <laughs> it is time for this. Tear it all down. Yeah. It'd be nice to see some of Wayne Rooney's old tweets being um, rehashed today as well. Like the one where he tweeted at himself in 2011, um, I'll put you asleep within 10 seconds, you little girl. Don't say stuff and not follow up on it. I'll be waiting. <laughs> was it when he had to pick that's, up Rio? I'll see you in the morning, Rio. Was that when Rio surfaced? That's at Wayne Rooney. He tweeted that. <laughs> notorious moron. Like you say, a notorious moron. <laughs> oh, dear me. And uh... <laughs> I think there's something quite nice and innocent about the days of footballers actually using Twitter on their own accounts yeah. and calling people little girls. <laughs> <laughs> threatening to knock him out anyway well, Ross McCormack with triangle head is always the one that we <laughs> got what, wasn't it what's your problem triangle head <laughs> oh dear so at this point anyway it's obviously it's turned on Rooney so there's a bit more upset at Rooney here and then there's a little mention of when we played him earlier in the season as well which I just thought was quite interesting different the reverse fixture was oh I know yeah that's probably my favourite game probably ever <laughs> favourite game favorite ever favourite game probably ever wow a 1-0 pen- late penalty win against Leeds it was shit that game as well it's awful and I mean it? I know we were bad but they were not really any better yeah imagine that being your favourite game ever that team that day it, it is kind of an illustration of how far we've gone it's kind of interesting as well with what Fark was saying about um Rutter needing some time to learn to be a, a number 10. I was like, why didn't he do this weeks ago? And his implication after the game was like, well, if we try this six weeks ago, he wouldn't have known how to do it. So he's, we've been teaching him to um, not showboat, which I don't think is quite sunk in yet. But all that kind of stuff. But the team that day, um, back four's all right, but it's Luke Ayling at right back with Charlie Creswell there. And then Strauch and Byron midfield, Ampadu and Gray, still think that's a good midfield. But then ahead of them, Dan James, Perveda, Shackleton and Gelhart. Mm. It was this was a different um, time. Uh, what's he called? Farker said it felt like a different season the other day. We had Klaassen and Darlo on the bench. Leo Hjelder, Darko JB, Lewis Bate, Cody Drama of Birmingham City now. Um, so yeah, things have changed quite a lot. Is he injured at the minute then, Drama, presumably? Couldn't play against he's on loan, us because he's on loan. Ah, yes. That that old chestnut. Mm. Didn't think you, of that. Kind of, we do, yeah, we do technically still own him, but we're not going to in a bit. I think there was some confusion about that because when I was reading pre-match from the Birmingham end, the the reports were like uh, Cody Drama has said he thinks he is not allowed to play <laughs> against Leeds, and it was like, well, could you? Is there any way you could? Well, I mean, do you reckon um, Wayne Rooney's on top of matters like this? Well, exactly. There's going to be somebody there that either the reporters or Cody Drama could ask to figure this out. <laughs> Because the the worst thing that could have happened, or the least surprising thing, would have been Wayne Rooney going, like, "Why can't you play? Mm. Stick him in the team anyway." And then it's a what a ten point deduction. <laughs> get relegated as a result. That'd have been a great parting shot to get, actually get him a points deduction. All, all the leagues lot going, lads, you can't play him. Shh. Don't you tell me what to do. Um, right then, let's hear his reception at full time. You mentioned this on the match ball actually, Moscow. Seems like an accurate assessment of the situation. And he did fuck off. Yep. 
not option. Are they, you were just telling me before we started recording, he's still at the training ground or something. It's not clear whether this was somebody taking the piss, like one of the uh, like spoof journalist accounts, suggesting that he'd essentially barricaded himself oh, okay, in fair enough. and refused to leave until his backroom team were paid off. He was furious arguments had taken place. Even if it's not true, I like to think it's true. Fair enough. His backroom team being... Ashley, Ashley Cole. Ashley Cole and John O'Shea. Yeah. Great bunch of lads. Yeah. That's why once, um, when I was DJing in Manchester on Friday nights before I retired from all that business, his brother came in. Looks just like him. Wayne Rooney? Yeah. Did he get ID'd on the way in? <laughs> no. No, I didn't think so. No, no, no. Right. Do you, do you want to stick with Birmingham or do you, want a little, do you want a little diversion to Johnny United? Oh, is he, is he back in business, is he? Uh, is, he is he still going? Yeah. I got this down to a minute. Right. But he's very much, um, is he sticking on he's, brand? He's, he's doing his usual, yeah. Absolutely shocking performance from start to finish. No life in it, no intensity, no plan, no clue, shite. But we're accustomed to that now because that's what this manager does. He produces consistently shit football. He hasn't got a fucking clue. For example, today, takes off Kobe Manu for Scott McTominay. Why? You might as well have replaced him with a fucking traffic cone because he's fucking shit. Oh, but he's got a few goals this season. All of a sudden, he's a good midfielder. He's fucking shit, and he needs fucking selling. As do 90% of this fucking squad, which I've been saying consistently. But you've still got my United fans coming at me because I'm 10 hag out. Why would I back an incompetent manager? Why would you back an incompetent manager? Do you like punishment? This manager is showing consistently he's incompetent. So why would you back that? He's not good enough, and he's fucking sacking. He should have been sacked ages ago. But you carry on backing this manager. Big, bad Man United accounts with fucking big, big, big followings are still backing this manager. You're fucking idiots. But people still want to back this manager. You're fucking idiots. Absolute idiots. And we're a big fucking problem in this fan base. Backing incompetency all the time. Fucking bollocks. Have a good evening. Take care. <laughs> <laughs> he's very consistent he's great isn't he? I miss him I my usual dose of uh, of Johnny United I'd hate to meet him on a night out why because he's he'd terrify me I think probably quite hard yeah yeah yeah. I'll pass on your address no I don't he does follow me on Twitter actually really I think it's because I followed him and then I saw him following back and I am followed <laughs> I went oh no why don't you shadow block I shadow block him like, no because I need to check his account down because that's uh, where he puts the videos that's true yeah yeah Anyway, Johnny, if you are watching or listening, we have. Be, I'm just glad I don't live in the same town as him. To a fellow Bradfordian, mm. it's lo- it's lovely to see you keep up the great work. Which bit of Bradford do you live in? I don't matter. <laughs> don't matter. Can no. you not remember? I'm in Bravo Delta 10. That's all you need to know. Fair do. That sector. Um, right. One last bit of Birmingham. Yeah. They, oh, well, say Birmingham. There's a, there's a chance this guy's actually um, in the room with us now, I think. <laughs> oh, really? Positives. I thought Tyler Roberts looked really good when he came on. I was really impressed with him, but to me, like, you know, I don't know why you don't start him, you know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know why you don't start him. He's been injured all season, hasn't he? It's kind of typically. Yeah. But he gradually coming and in. a desperate lack of end product would <laughs> be the other reason I wouldn't start him. Well, I mean, this it's been like, we, who knew, who even knows? He's probably, he's in that Bamford zone, isn't he, where you don't know what he is anymore? Because he's just been, you know, went to QPR, that all oh, this will find something out about him injured I know what he is not our problem anymore no it was nice to see him um, and he did come out he, he really really tried to take some people on um, in a sort of non-consequential area in the middle of the pitch um, which kind of gave me flashbacks to that Newcastle game which I still think was Rafinha's fault but <laughs> um, yeah he's gradually he's, he's been I think he's had one start since he went there and, and then the last couple of weeks I think he must have uh, recovered from his injury, so he started coming off the bench. So what they just need, new manager who can get the best out of him. And there have been on the Birmingham forums some people suggesting that they should go get Marcelo Bielsa. So I thought, I thought you were going to advocate for him in for player manager then for a second. He could be. But he, well, if anybody's going to get the best, knows how to get the best out of Tyler Roberts, it is Tyler Roberts. There's mm. also obviously... He speaks the language as well, doesn't he? Because he's from like West Bromwich or somewhere, isn't he? <laughs> he knows the region. Um there have also been people uh, advocating for Jesse Marsh going to Birmingham. Mm. I think he tends to crop up with these jobs as well. And I've got some was, Jesse later for you. He would um, help. Um, he would just run Roberts into the ground again. He'd just be a repeat of Leicester, where he's like, "Oh, we're, you know, I can't believe Marcelo overtrained these players and you know didn't help them recover." And that guy whose hamstrings have have rotted to bits and can't <laughs> move can just stay around the pitch because he's a warrior. And yeah, we won't see him again for a year. Do you know who's not overtrained? Wayne Rooney. 
<laughs> he's had a good old rest I wonder since, if that's part since of, retirement. One of the things I thought about Birmingham is that bunch of players look like they really hate him mm. as well. And the whole the thing with uh, that's been coming through with him saying, or what observers have been saying, this fearless football thing where he wants them to all be possession based and high octane and stuff is that they were never they weren't trained for that in pre season. So he's been trying to get them fit. And, you know, how arsed must John Ruddy be at 37 years old? It's like, right, we're going to transform you into a sweeper keeper and you've got to get super fit. It's like, fuck off, I'm 37. I just came here to just like, to just stop some shots. John Eustace said Mm -hmm. we would be playing direct and we would get, we'd get wins and we might get to the playoffs and I could see out my career at Wembley. What the fuck are you doing making me, why am I watching videos of Barcelona fucking circa 2012? I'm not learning how to do that. I'm old. <laughs> he did have a nice moment with the cop, actually, bro. He, he fell for the applause thing. Oh, classic. But then he took it very well and he seemed to appreciate it. So, yeah. I always, I always enjoy it when a keeper enjoys it. Yeah. He's Good. been around the block, hasn't he? And he probably still, let's, I mean, they're practically the same age, Wayne Rudy and John Ruddy as well. So, mm. if you're John Ruddy in this fucking upstart, I know we've won some stuff. One of them's John Ruddy, the other one's <laughs> just Ruddy. Hey, there we go. Let's have a look at John Ruddy's face. <laughs> we'll see if he looks better Nick than uh, Wayne Rooney he de- he, I can tell you he does oh yeah absolutely 100% <laughs> if, 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 you, if you don't know what even what a person looks like you can take a fair stab that they look better than Wayne Rooney imagine yeah so imagine being John Ruddy and then Wayne Rooney turns up to you and going hey you're not fit enough fuck off Right then, let's hear more from, from the, that, the boy in blue. Yeah, that was we? actually the boy in blue, not Moscow. But this uh, this is from this morning when there was the speculation about Rooney starting to grow, and he was doing Which a lot of him. He was, <laughs> he was doing a live stream, <laughs> and he just completely fails to read a headline here and has got the wrong end of the stick entirely. But I did find it quite funny. Uh, Birmingham World headline: Birmingham City next manager, former Sunderland, Nottingham Forest, and Leeds United men. Favourites of Wayne Rooney, pressures grow. So it looks like that Leeds United are after a new manager, which is like another, could it be another Birmingham scenario? They're sitting fourth in the table and they're after a new manager. It's just, it's just, uh, just baffling, isn't it? Like, <laughs> He's not wrong, it is baffling. <laughs> that, that really is uh, difficult to grasp. Certainly baffled him. <laughs> can't, I can't believe it's Sunderland, Leeds. They've all sacked the managers again. <laughs> <laughs> taking that so calmly as well, given within, what, 12 hours of roundly trousing Birmingham 3-0. Oh, no, maybe they've, they've and, got a bit mad there. And that is the danger, it should be said, of live streaming, isn't it? That you will, like, your brain will just take over your mouth. Mm. Or the other way around, rather. Yeah, dangerous, dangerous business. Do you right. want to re-record that <laughs> No, I, I stand by it. It's not even live. <laughs> well, speaking of mouth taking over brains, yeah. should we hear from Jesse? Yeah, definitely. I've I've really missed hearing him talking for, for about stop. 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah everywhere he's, he's, before Christmas, wasn't he? Apart from all the exclusive interviews we've barely heard from him, have we? Now, well, now he's got a podcast, thankfully, with he's called Call It What You Want. Right. From CBS. You know what I want to call it. Where they're discussing the US. Boring. MMT. CBS are giving him a platform then, are they? Seems like it. Those guys. And he's discussing Brendan Aronson. Well, it's actually a, a wider discussion about all the players in the national team who need a move because their careers are all being ruined by other people, Yeah, as is the standard There's thing. Only yeah. Weston McKenney is getting any respect anymore, isn't there? Yeah. And it's, so, it is a respect-based business, isn't it? Yeah, so th- this is discussing Brendan Aronson and his potential return to Leeds. They're, they're talking about that maybe Union, Union wants to send him back. And then Leeds has talked a little bit about, yeah, they'd be open to, to bring him back. I'm not sure how excited he would be about that opportunity. I know that we had a really good time when we were in Leeds together. I'm just not sure where everything stands right now. They had a really good time. Glad you did. Yeah. When they were in Leeds together. Because we didn't because it was shit. Maybe that's, maybe that's what it, how it's going to break down. Union. <laughs> Glass Union. Union have decided they don't want him anymore because he's rubbish. And... Brendan is like, oh well, hey, maybe I'll go back to Leeds, and Leeds are <laughs> Leeds are like saying, yeah, we'll have you. But then Brendan suddenly putting putting his conditions down is, I'm only coming back to Leeds if you give Jesse his job back, as if all these things will go. And it's probably only a matter of days until Jesse's having to do his last, uh, call it what you want, podcast, where he's like, guys, got a job, so Leeds taking me back, gonna get them. Probably he always said, didn't he, that um, it would have been better for him just to take us down because he would have had time in the championship with 46 games um, to teach mm. all those players how to play his way. And so, him and Brendan had such a good time getting relegated in the mm. first place that it'd be like, should we do it? Do you know what, Should lads, we do I, it again? I feel like we've really missed out. Little little bid into Bournemouth saying, you know, oh, you know, after uh, six months of Premier League 
rehab. Um, God, he t- talks such bollocks, doesn't he? Tyler, uh, this I've is me talking. Not, I was on about you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> no. There's another clip anyway of Jesse. There's a, I'll let you... Have a, you've not heard this clip, have you? Either no, you? no. So no. Um, he's talking here about what Brendan needs to do to get back on track with his career. Is this really getting into sort of the technicalities? Can, and... can you... Well, I'll, it's for you. It's for the listeners. Can right. you guess what he, what he thinks he needs to do? But I would often say to him, like, don't worry about letting me down or your teammates down. You have to have a little bit more of a son of a bitch mentality that says, give me the ball. Don't worry about it. I'll take care of this. I got this. I'm going to run with it. And I think with everything that went on with Leeds, that the pressure started to mount with him a little bit. And then he internalizes it and he starts to become a little bit too nervous on the pitch instead of being his fearless free self where he just goes out and plays. Basically the same thing he said every week, still, isn't it? Mm-hmm. They need, they're scared. Those players are scared. Yeah. They need to, he needs to just get the ball and run with it. Do you know why they were scared? Right the Do you know why they, were, why they were scared and they felt pressure? Because we kept losing and we were shit. That's why. <laughs> That's one of the reasons. Is, and yeah. any time they needed somebody to kind of take the stress away from them or re- relieve the pressure, they looked over at the dugout and it's him going, they're scared, they're scared. <laughs> it's not going to calm you down, is it? Ah. <sighs> Yeah, as you can tell, I still do not find Jesse Marsh a particularly soothing presence, even at this distance, like just 30 seconds of listening to him on some podcast saying mild things about mm-hmm. Brendan Aronson. It's like my my stress is not being lessened by his return to my brain. Mm-hmm. On, on tiresome uh, windbags, Rory, I've not got a clip. Scum, so, scum one. He Chelsea did Rory with his hot takes, is it? Scum one, he did a video, I'm on United back. No. Is is the answer to that? He's done one since, saying what Man United, United, what, Man, what Man United need to do to fix himself. Fuck off! Just fuck off! Yeah, was the gist of it. Um, do you want to hear? Should we finish on a bit of Webby and O'Neill and have a bit, a little tiny bit of Millwall in between? Okay, go on then. Because I like I like the Millwall bloke. I have to say, Lions TV. He does these little songs, particularly when they've won. <laughs> He's in a pub here, with completely some, indecipherable. He, as you'll find in a minute, it's changed basically all the lyrics and the tune to this one. But he's, he's in a pub and there's a picture with some owls behind him. Yep. And it, it results in this. Mr. Owl, Mr. Owl's cousin. I feel like Chevy Chase. I'll be your buddy. Yeah, we'll go, we'll go. Now call me Owl. Call him Owl. Call I'm going to be your buddy. I'm a ditching ball. <laughs> it got into almost Vic Reeves' club, club singer there, didn't it? That did. That is great. The leap from owl to owl is genius. Yeah, and then he yeah. doesn't know any other words. The Doesn't need either. to. Doesn't need to. Just even having that thought is great. Did you remember that guy who, I think he did he try to run for president, but he's an environmentalist now in America. Do you remember the guy? Al uh, Gore? Al Gore, yeah. of course. Yeah. Yes. Do you remember yeah. him? Owl and Shearer. Yep. Another one. <laughs> Good. Good. I was pleased with your joke. Yep. Owl, owl and Smith. Oh. Yeah. Should we go Webby and O'Neill? <laughs> yeah, that's the best we can. All right. Should we hear them in, in Webby, ha- Webby and Owl Neil. Owl Neil. Owl Neil, yeah. yeah. Um, th- well, it's just O'Neill, actually. I bet they're a hoot. There's no Webby on this. They? I bet they're a hoot. Yeah. yeah. I bet yeah. they're so mad about Leeds, uh, about Man United losing that their heads are spinning. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, let's hear from them in happier are eat- times. Are they eating mice? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Webby's got the teeth for it. I think he's. <laughs> You may, maybe you put it in a blender first. <laughs> Don't put mice in blenders. Might be an option. No. No? No, probably not. Fair enough. Uh, this is O'Neill anyway when they beat Aston Villa. It just shows you that this team is with the manager, that the players are with each other, the way they work for each other. I thought it was excellent. And what you've seen for the first time was fight. That's all we've asked for. We A lot of people came to this game. They didn't really have much hope. But tonight was an excellent performance and a fight back, right, which goes back many, many years or so. Like, this is Manchester United. United didn't will, and that was the great thing to see tonight. They never gave up, none of them. So something has dramatically changed inside that stadium, inside the manager, inside the players. You've seen from the players that the fans gave them the fighting spirit. How many people out there in this world of hating Manchester United are ill? And that's the great thing, they're ill. Tonight, they were all waiting that Eric Ten Hag's getting sacked in the morning. 
right? And the players were getting sacked, or the players had like sort of like threw him under the bus. Yeah. Tonight, they shown they're not throwing Eric Ten Hag under the bus, that they're prepared to work for the team, for the badge yeah. and the shirt and everything else, what goes with it. And most of all, the fans, they heard the fans and they they praised the fans there tonight. They were going mad on the pitch and after the final whistle. And it was just fantastic to see. No one's give up at this club. Eric Ten Hag's going nowhere. And a lot of these players ain't going nowhere. What was on that pitch tonight? Yeah. Wow. Rousing. I'm confused. So, <laughs> the Aston Villa game... Who was, the, who was inside who? Well, that's one thing that changes inside. But then um, all these fans who were ill, was there, was there some kind of... They allowed... like They gave tickets out of the hospital and everybody came down, was like wheeled in. in I mean, I'm imagining that the entire crowd was just... People, people bandaged were, from head he, to toe. Did he, did he mean ill in the rap sense? I think people were sick because they'd seen inside Eric Ten Hag one way or another. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I don't know what he was doing. Right. Uh, it, there was an angle. That's just that speculation. <laughs> That's very good. <laughs> Thank you. Very good. Yeah, it's confusing though, isn't it? Mm. He was pleased anyway. That, and that's the important thing, as and long as he's happy. It, the ter- yeah. Manchester United Football Club. Yeah, this because that's what it is, isn't it? The, yeah, the ten, yeah, they beat Aston Villa, though, 3-2. Yeah. Yeah. I have a slightly different interpretation of what Man United were doing in that game, but I think we'll wait until we hear the next clip and see if it will still hold out, I mean, if it, he needs to hear it from me. That was a long time ago, though, was that clip? Yeah. That was a week ago. Yeah. A full week ago. Oh, and a week is a long time in the game of football, the, isn't it? They've yeah. lost to Forest since, uh, and then this happened. Well, that first half was abysmal. United were given the ball at the back all the time in the world and they did nothing with it. The midfield, no creativity, didn't want the ball. Toothless up front. United just did, didn't do anything, didn't show anything. Absolutely abysmal. I mean, it was poor. Another away defeat uh, and, and it can't go on. It's, it's terrible, this. I don't see it turning round now. This isn't going to change. There has to be a big clear out, personnel and everything, because this today just pinpoints what's been going on all season. United just can't do it when it's needed. There you go. No one, <laughs> no one's thrown this manager under the bus. These players have shown fucking get rid of all of them. Yeah, you can see the, the, the endemic problems. Yeah, I think I can help here. I think they're missing something. And what they're missing is that the Villa game kind of showed that when those players can be asked, they'll win. Mm. Like, because they were, what were they, 2 0 down in mm. that match? They came back. And I think there's, at some point it'll kick in with players sometimes where they'll just go, ah, oh, look, this is ridiculous. I'm a 2 0 down the, to these. We can beat them. Let's, let's, come on, we'll win. But the reason that that doesn't happen more often, it wasn't like a turning point. It wasn't them feeding off the fans. It's just that 90% of the time, players like Bruno Fernandes just don't give a fuck and cannot be bothered. And so, because they're all horrible, they're the kind of, you know, what kind of player signs for Man United? You end up with a kind of player who signs for Man United and none of the players who play for Man United give a fuck, (laughs) apart from occasionally. And this just proves that if they actually gave a fuck, it would take a very small amount of effort for what is a bunch of actually quite talented footballers go, should we just win the league? <laughs> but then they're like, oh, fuck it. Can't be, can't, sounds, sounds quite tiring. Getting paid quite a lot, aren't we? And I was like, Ten Hag's fucking annoying. Mm-hmm. And all the, the fans are pretty sick. If they do change manager. Wayne. It's got to be, hasn't it? He knows the club. Mm-hmm. People are saying they're not trying. If he's there threatening to put them all asleep in 10 <laughs> seconds, that could be an option. And also for people who are uh, ill, they yeah. need could be put to sleep as well and the suffering <laughs> yeah brilliant it's an I option mean, so Manchester United go to Wigan in the FA Cup uh, on Monday the 8th of I mean they'll win that of January but what if they didn't and now that could be one of the all time greats it'd be good as well because they wouldn't sack him for that oh they would sure no they'd, they'd brave it out I don't think they'd, well, they'd got... go like our oh, free resort he made some changes you know, reserve, mm-hmm. there'll be a reserve goalkeeper who throws the ball in the net or something, who then will probably be the keeper. Who is their reserve keeper? Because um, Onana's going away to AFCON, isn't he? If it, although we think he's he's mithering about when he meets up with them. So they're going to have a second-choice goalkeeper. De Gea is just floating around Manchester having dinner all the time, just not giving a, another one. De Gea, there's some attention on why on how it come he's always in Manchester wrestlers. I don't think he's changed either. I think he's living exactly the life that all the Man United players are living, <laughs> where he just does not give a fuck about what happens at Man United in training or in games. The only difference is he's not playing for them anymore. Mm. 
So I think they'll get away with losing to, I think Ten Hag will get away with losing to Wigan. We'd have some very entertaining meltdowns. Who does he play next in the Premier League after that? No idea. Okay, Couldn't they'll, care less. They'll probably... Well, it'd be funny when it, when it happens. They'll probably win that to get Wigan out. Says, oh, Wigan was a blip and then won't, lose another, uh, won't win another game all season. They seem to have Tom Heaton there as a reserve goalkeeper. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do, won't it? That makes sense. And who have they got in the... Because um, they brought Johnny Evans back, but wasn't there somebody else in the under-21s who was kind of like the player-manager experienced type? They can get him in. Uh, on I know too much about them, but Sunday, also Sun- not enough. Sunday the 14th of January, they've got Spurs at Old Trafford, which has the potential to go really poisonous if uh, if Spurs get their act together for that game. Could be fun. It's a big if, though, with Spurs, isn't it? It's always the shame. Um, will they get their act together? Goalkeepers, somebody called Altai Bender and then 37-year-old Tom Heaton, maybe the emergency loan for John Ruddy. Mm. They want a keeper who's uh, good with his feet, aren't they? Yeah, it'll be Wayne Rooney's first signing when he takes over as manager of that Spurs game, aren't he? He would fucking hate it. Imagine being John Ruddy. You've got dream move to the Premier League. Wow, I thought I thought, I thought, thought that was all over for me. Yeah, Wayne wants you at Man United. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> right, well, we'll wrap up propaganda there. More, hopefully, next week, celebrating uh, Man United losing at Wigan. And, uh, and our glorious FA Cup run. The start of our glorious FA Cup run. The road to Wembley. Mm. That's what next episode's going to be called. <laughs> we'll see you on that. See you in a bit. The Square Ball Podcast.